This might be the last video if I can squeeze in three problems. So problem 14, the last video at least for SAT prep. Hopefully I will keep doing videos. OK, and it looks something like this. And it comes back down like this. And what are they telling us? They're saying that this, this is line, line L, line M. This is x. This is z degrees. This is y degrees. Looks like we have to play the angle game. And the figure above, lines L are parallel to line M. Or line L is parallel to line M. There's only one L. What does z equal in terms of x and y? OK, so these two lines are parallel. If this is y degrees, what other angles are also y degrees? Well, what's the corresponding angle on right here? Well, this is also going to be y degrees, right? These lines are parallel. This is a transversal. These are corresponding angles. This is going to be y. And it makes sense, too. I mean, if you tilted this angle, you would visually see that these angles would be the same. If this is y, what is this angle? Well, they're opposite, so this is also going to be y. And then we have z plus x plus y is after, has to equal 180, right? Because they're all in the same triangle. Z plus x plus y is equal to 180. And we want to solve for z, so subtract x and y from both sides. And you get z is equal to 180 minus x minus y. And that is choice E. Next problem. Problem 15. If n over n minus 1 times 1 over n times n over n plus 1 is equal to 5 over k. For positive integers, n and k, what is the value of k? So these are positive integers. So before multiplying all of this out, we can simplify a little bit. This n can cancel out with this n. And now let's see if we can, so what does the top, what does this left-hand side become? And the numerator always left, this is just a 1 now, this is a 1. So we're left with 1 times 1 times n, so that's n over n minus 1, n minus 1, times 1, I could ignore that 1, times n plus 1, times n plus 1, is equal to 5 over k. So what are they asking? Oh, what, is, what is the value of k? Well, we can say that n is equal to 5, or let's assume that n is equal to 5. Because we don't know definitely that n is equal to 5. It, it could be you know, some multiple. Well, I'll show you. Let's assume that n is equal to 5. If n is equal to 5, then what is k? Well, then k would be this denominator. right? If n is 5, then k is this. Then k would be, so this could be 5 over 5 minus 1 times 5 plus 1, and that equals 5 over 4 times 6, which is equal to 5 over 24. So this could be 5 over 24. And they're all positive integers, so k is 24. k is 24, and that's choice c. So the trick here is really, once again, you know, simplify a little bit, multiply it out, and then pattern matching. Let me just set n is equal to 5. If n is equal to 5, then what is k? It's 5 minus 1 times 5 plus 1. Just pattern matching. Next problem. Problem 6. I will do it in magenta because this is the last problem in the book. To celebrate a colleague's graduation, the M coworkers in an office agreed to contribute equally to a catered lunch that costs a total of Y dollars. So there's M workers, M workers, and the total price is Y dollars for the lunch. If P of the workers failed to contribute, which of the following represents the additional amount in dollars that each of the remaining coworkers must contribute to pay for the lunch. The additional amount in dollars. So if everyone paid, how much would we have to pay? Well, the total lunch is y, right? So if everyone was a good coworker, we would each have to pay y divided by the number of coworkers. Right? This is the ideal situation. But we know some of the coworkers didn't pay. P didn't pay. So how many are we going to have to divvy it up now with? So then that means only M minus P paid. Right? These are the these are the deadbeats that did not pay for the lunch. So only the M minus P paid. So now we have to actually divide the Y dollars on between a smaller group of people who actually paid. And the smaller group of people who actually paid is M minus P. 
So if you wanted to figure out, and this is going to be a larger number. Why? Because this denominator is smaller. When the denominator is smaller and you have the same numerator, this is going to be a larger number. So if you wanted to know how, what is the additional amount you have to pay, well, this is how much we're having to pay, which is a larger amount than how much we would have paid if everyone paid. So how much are we paying extra? Well, we subtract this from this. This is how much we end up paying. And, this is, and we subtract how much we should have paid. And we'll get the additional amount, right? Let me draw a line here so you can get confused. So then how do we, uh, let's, that doesn't look like one of the choices. So let's actually get a common denominator. A common denominator would be m times m minus p. Right? I just multiply the denominators. So y over m minus p, that's the same thing as m y over m times m minus p. I just multiply the numerator and the denominator by m. And this is minus, minus, we are at m minus p times y. Minus m minus p times y. Right? I just, for this one, I just multiply the numerator and the denominator by m minus p. Right? I just found a common denominator and added the fractions, or subtracting the fractions. And so the, the denominator stays m times m minus p. Let me see if I can simplify the numerator. That becomes m y minus m y plus p y, right? Minus times a minus here is a plus, plus p y. These cancel out, so you get p y over m times m minus p. And that is choice, that is choice e. That is choice e, p y over m times m minus p. And we have now done something like, what, eight tests and Eight tests and 54 problems per test, so that's 54 times 8. 54 times 8, that's what, 432 SAT problems. And I think you're ready to go take the SAT and, and get a perfect score. And let me know if you do, that would be very exciting. All right, I'll see you in, I guess, other videos that are non-SAT related. Or maybe I'll, when a new book comes out, I'll have to do this.